When you experience sorrow over something that you have said or done, how do you know whether that sorrow is a healthy, godly sorrow that is rooted in conviction, or if the sorrow you are experiencing is one that is rooted in guilt, shame, and condemnation? It is, it is important to be able to distinguish between these two because we don't want to suppress a healthy conviction, yet we don't want to allow a toxic type of sorrow to stick around either. And I think our passage today in 2 Corinthians 7 will really help us differentiate between these two. So we're just going to read one verse, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. So the godly sorrow Paul is talking about is a healthy sorrow. It is one that is rooted in a healthy conviction because godly sorrow ultimately leads to healthy action. Godly sorrow mobilizes us to correct a wrong. Biblical repentance necessitates an action, a, a turning from something. This is actually a very sweet experience when God enables us to experience a godly sorrow that leads to action. A worldly sorrow, on the other hand, produces regret. When we experience a worldly type of sorrow, our sorrow is more rooted in the consequences of our actions rather than the motive behind our actions. So this sorrow can stem from getting caught rather than sinning against God. Worldly sorrow tends to paralyze rather than mobilize. It produces death because regret smothers us. So rather than taking action, this type of sorrow leads to hiding the symptoms of sin rather than cutting the root of sin. Would you characterize your current sorrow about sin or some sort of action as healthy in that it's leading you to repentance? Or would you characterize it more as unhealthy in that it just has you stuck? Are you willing to bring what is currently grieving your spirit to the light in order to be done with it? Or are you allowing it to fester in the dark and, and wallowing in the shame or regret of it? So I want to encourage you to, to identify the source of that sorrow. And if there is repentance that needs to take place, then, then allow that sorrow to produce action. Godly sorrow can be a healthy, refining thing for us, but we must yield to its purpose, which is action that leads to repentance, not staying stuck in a cycle of regret.